Here I'm going to do a demo of how to use a large language model, specifically the Cohere embedding model that takes text and generates embeddings, or basically a vector of meaning that a computer can understand, to train a classifier of various types of text. We're going to use the student questions data, which is a whole bunch of test questions, about 120,000 of them, although I'm going to only use about 5,000 because we don't need that many for transfer learning, and this is also going to take a very long time if we used all 120,000 of them. Now, if I look at the data set we have here, I'm going to take the top 18 lines of it, which I know actually contain the information, and we see here that it's a regular CSV where we have a text and a label. Now, the text starts with the quotes, even though it's multi-line here, so we have all the way up to this section, and any forest measure is afforestation, selective grazing, clearing forest, selective felling, and that is a biology question. The same thing here, we have among the following organic acids, and then that's a chemistry question here, then we have this question here, which is clearly a maths question. And then finally here, in this one, if we take the last of these quotes, we have another biology question. Now I've created this data set. It's a subset of the main one. It has 5,000 of them. But what we're going to do is we're going to use a little application I've written in Python, which I will include a link to in the description below. And we're going to use it to convert this to another format that Clarify uses as well. We are going to use this same utility to split the data set into a training and testing set. Now, here it is. This is subject questions short. Now, when I run the little utility, it does this. First, it asks if any columns have multiple values. We know they don't because there's just a single block of text and a single topic. It's either physics, chemistry, biology, and math. So no. Enter the number of the column that contains the text. Now that's the first column, so we want one. So we it's already called text. And it notices that there are multiple categories for the second column. It, there's chemistry, math, biology, and physics. It's noticing that there isn't just one or the other, which would be binary classification. And it's automatically noticed that there's only one other column, so we're going to use label to be used as the labels column. Would you like to split this data set? We're going to say yes, because we want to turn this into a training and testing set. Would you like to shuffle it? No, we don't really need to for this. And would you like to split the data set into training and testing or training, validation, and test data sets? I'm just going to say a training and test data set. What percentage of the data set should be used for training? I'm going to use the pretty standard number of, of 80%, and it automatically knows now that it's going to be split into 80% train and 20% test. And if I go here, this is the original CSV that it created, and then we have one called subject question short clarified train and subject question short clarified test. And they're not that big, one megabyte and 256K. So let's create the app and then go and get started. So I'm going to create a new app to do this. I'm going to call it this LLM Transfer Learn. And I'm going to set it initially to the Clarify Text workflow. There it is down here, LLM Transfer Learn. Now I want to change this to use the Cohere text workflow. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to make a copy of the base workflow. I am going to change the name to text-cohere to know that this is a workflow using Cohere. And I'm going to click in here and change this text embedder from the Clarify one to the Cohere one, text to embeddings. I'm going to save this. I'm going to go into settings, and I'm going to now set this to be the base workflow. Text Cohere. Change base workflow. And what this means is that every text input that's uploaded to it will be run through the text cohere embedding model. As you see, there's nothing here yet. I'm going to upload my training data. So that was this one, this subjects questions short clarified train. Let's upload it. It's uploading. Now it's taking a little while because what it needs to do is for each of these text samples, it has to run them through the cohere embedding model. So it isn't just uploading these, it's uploading them and performing inference on them. What I'll do is I'm going to speed this up. And now that our upload has completed, what we can do is we can select everything here, and we're going to put this into our training data set. We're going to say apply to all search results, and I'm going to add train, add new data set, and we are adding everything to the data set. And we can refresh to make sure that worked. 
and a sign should have nothing in it? Nope. And train should have everything in it. Good. Now I can upload our test set. It looks like they've all uploaded. Let's refresh. And let's find the ones that are unassigned. These are all the test data. Let's select everything. Go to data set. We're going to apply to all the search results and we're going to add a test set. And then we're done there. We can refresh to double check. Everything works. Unassigned is empty. Test has things and train has things. Now what we want to do is train our classifier. So we're going to go to models. We're going to say create model. We're going to do a transfer learning classifier. Let's give it the same name as we called the other one. This is the name of the app. We're going to take the training set to train it. We don't need to worry about the version ID. We're going to take all of the concepts, biology, chemistry, maths, and physics. And the concepts are mutually exclusive, so I'm going to turn that on. Uh, each question can only be one type of question. And we don't need to worry about the other setting here. Let's hit train model. It's going, training. And it's done. Now let's do some metrics examination. Let's do calculate on this. And while it is now doing that, let's take a look at some of our inputs. I can go to the training set. This is what it trained on. And I can see both here, the annotation, this is a physics annotation, and I can also check the prediction. And it is 99.8% certain that this is a physics question. It is 99.9% certain this is a maths question. It is 98.2% certain that this is a chemistry question. This is all done with the training data, so let's look at the test data. It is 97% sure this is biology, 99.9% .9 sure this is physics, 99.9% .9 sure this is math, 99.9% sure this is math. One more problem where 99.9% .9 sure this is math. So we can go and take a look at our evaluations by going to the model. And then we can take a look at this specific model we've trained. We look at the versions. There's only one version. And we can see the results of our evaluation. Now this is the evaluation for the training data. So it has a very, very high score on everything. It's got a 0.99 for F1 precision and recall. ROC AUC is at 1. And we can even see the summary of how it did. And it did extremely well here. We can look at the confusion matrix. We can see it by far did very well along the diagonals. I can even see some of the examples of where it got things right, where it knew that this was biology. It was 100% sure. This was 99.99999. All these are 9999s. Now let's take a look instead at the test data, because that is the one that the model had never seen before. It didn't do quite as well, but it still did quite well, given that we only used 5,000 out of the 120,000 samples available. It did 91 on F1 score, 91 on precision, 91 on recall, and 98 on ROC AUC. And we can see again that the diagonals are very strong, and we can see where it was possibly weak. And we can even see all of the examples here of where it was guessing things right. And finally, you can even look at the precision recall curves. And that's it. So we've done a very quick, easy transfer learning classifier for data about test questions. Thank you.